Welcome to the Yerdiwaze Front Page Podcast. In today's special edition, we talk to some of the collaborators of Yerdiwaze Presents Warhawks to get the behind-the-scenes scoop on the documentary about minor baseball in Ganawage. Eagle's Nest Convenience and LaFleur's Restaurant, located on Route 207. Eagle's Nest, open daily from 8 to 11. Pick up something fresh from their deli counter. Open 8 to 6 on weekdays and 10 to 5 on Saturdays. And while you're out, grab some takeout or call in for delivery at LaFleur's Restaurant. Open 11 to 7 from Sunday to Wednesday and 11 to 8 from Thursday to Saturday. All your needs in one convenient location. Hey everyone, my name is Jordan Standup. I am the assistant editor here at Yuriwaze. Today I am joined by our editor and publisher, Mr. Greg Horn, as well as our digital video and multimedia manager, Brady Cross, as well as Brandon Bordeaux from Baby Blue Memory. So welcome to the studios, guys. Hello, hello. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Jordan. We're all here today because we're talking about a very exciting project that we all worked very hard on throughout the summer months, which is Yordiwaze Presents Warhawks. And it actually made its debut just last Thursday at 2.07. So Greg, how did that uh, showing go that evening? Uh, the show went pretty well. We invited all the players and their parents and uh, family members of the U13, U15, and U18 teams uh, who are featured prominently in this documentary uh, to come and get the first look uh, at, at, at this uh, 54 minute long documentary. And it was, uh, I think it was very well received. Yeah, absolutely. And there was a couple more showings at the uh, Ganawage Brewing Company over the weekend as well. Yes, uh, because we wanted to be able to get people to experience this, right? So there was a lot of hard work put on, uh, put into this uh, over the last three and a half, four months, uh, you know, and and I think we really wanted uh, people to see it. Uh, and and have a shared experience, right? To to watch it. So uh, we had uh, three showings on Saturday afternoon at one, three, and five p.m. at the Ganawagi Brewing Company, and uh, you know we had a you know a few dozen more people show up to catch it. Yeah, it's very exciting to uh, to be able to watch, and uh, maybe we should just go back to to the very beginning of this project, Greg, and we could start talking about how um, you know we started to build the foundation for this uh, particular documentary. Okay, so uh, back in mid or late July, that during one of our story meetings uh, we have every week here, uh, Mr. Brady Cross said, uh, "Hey, let's uh, let's try something. Let's 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 try something new. Let's look at making, uh, you know, looking taking some of the, the coverage that we're doing on certain things and expanding it instead of, uh, you know, between a one and five minute news piece video brief. Let's try something a little bit more ambitious and." Uh, let's look at some uh, mini documentaries, maybe look at something that's going to be 15, 20 minutes. And, uh, you know, yeah, that sounds like a pretty cool idea. Let's uh, let's discuss. And then we looked at a bunch of the different things that were happening in the community that that could because there's so many things that could warrant something like this. Right. So we sat down and uh, we, we all brainstormed. And at the time, the Warhawks were just ending their regular seasons and uh, and, and, and the teams were peaking and doing very well through our brainstorming session we said well why not the warhawks so that weekend while covering the game that the u15 and the u18 teams i spoke with uh warhawks president terry stacy and just gave him a little bit of a heads up about uh what the idea was and to see if it was something that he would be interested in participating in and then talking to the teams if they were interested. And if they were, let them know that we would need, uh, you know, more access than normal. And we'd be there a lot, being on the bench and and talking to them and, you know, potentially miking up some players. Uh, we, we ended up not doing that, but there was a lot of things that we were talking about, right? So he spoke to those those players and uh, the, the the teams and they all seemed to be very agreeable and so we, we started working on the project and we talked to Brandon because through Baby Blue Memories he was going to a lot of those games that we were going to and games that we weren't going to as well and you know seeing if he would be interested in, in, in working as a part of this project and, and that's really where the idea started from. Now Brandon what was your reaction when you when you heard that this project was just getting started up? I was like, well, I guess I found myself in the right place considering I'm going to most of these games anyway. But just to, to kind of reiterate what Greg was talking about in regards to reception, I think there's one way to look at it is if you have like, a, say, like a 12-year-old kid or a 14-year-old kid who played these games, and you know how what it's like when you're that age. You're very much like sociable, active. You're talking nonstop. You just, you know, that's kind of how I was anyway at this age. But 
my girlfriend's daughter is on the was on the U thirteens, and her and her teammates, and then most of the other players who were in attendance were very quiet. There wasn't a whole lot of chit chat while this was going on, like you might somewhat expect. Everyone was just like deep into focus when it came to watching this. And even when you watch it, you kind of look back, especially at the highlights of the championship games, you look back and you think about like where you were and what you were doing and what was going through your mind, like through every single, every highlight that was being shown on the screen. So when Greg contacted me and said like, Hey, we're thinking about doing this. I'm like, yeah, let's rock and roll. Let's make it like 15, 20 minutes. And just multiply that by three, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so that's what ended up happening, right? We kind of were, we weren't expecting to, for it to be this long, but as things were going and all the teams get into the playoffs they, they, and they just all started winning and they were all winning. They peaked at the right time. Everything came together and, you know, we saw history. We saw three teams from Ganawage all win, win the regionals and, and earn a, a spot in the provincials. And that's never happened before. So you know, we, we just, we knew we had something special. And then when all was said and done with our footage of uh, games, interviews and branded game footage too, we had well over 30 hours of, of, of video footage to go through. And, you know, thinking that I was like, well, we're, we're definitely not going to be in the 15, 20 minute range. <laughs> you know, I was thinking maybe more along the lines of 30 minutes and then seeing Brady work tirelessly at editing, uh, you know, uh, putting everything together after Eve had, had, had you know, labeled everything and, and start putting everything together. I was like, oh, we're going to, we're, we're going to be long. And when, when he showed us the first cut and it was 53 minutes, I was like, wow. <laughs> it could have easily been something that was uh, like a full feature, 120 minutes, but you know, we wanted to keep it as compact as possible with just enough of the good stuff and enough of the highlights and stuff like that without going too long. There was a lot of the interviews that we did capture. We ended up finding out extra little little topics or stuff that came up about either the history of the Warhawks, baseball, uh, who came up with this, who who played on this team, who coached this team. Just there's a very rich history of this sport in general in our community. And we ended up finding out all this extra tidbits of information that we didn't think we would necessarily be applying in this feature basically but lo and behold a lot of the stuff did end up in there a lot of the other stuff cutting room floor there's so much more that i wish could have made it out there a lot of praise to different people who work tirelessly behind the scenes as well and a lot of really funny stories about just the players and um and how they interact on the bench and stuff like that going to practice and and whatever whatever the case may be with with whoever Team player, coach, parent, lots of lots of rich stuff happening. You know, watching this develop over the course of the summer was really exciting. And you guys put in uh, an incredible amount of extra hours and everything like that, visiting or attending the games and just different things like that. So I was just wondering what might have been uh, one of the personal highlights for you over the course of the summer, Greg? For me, it was just it was, it was the culmination of everything and seeing within a 24 hour period, the three teams win. Uh, you know, and, and, and because I had been covering the Warhawks from when the season started, right? Looking at how these players are playing and, you know, the hard work that they're putting in. And then, you know, we were doing some 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 short two, three minute videos on them, taking pictures and, and writing about them in the paper. But to see everything all and all the hard work that they, that they put together and, and them coming together as teams, then making it to the gold medal game in the provincials and 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 just taking care of business and and and, and being very business like and, and and having fun and playing baseball to the, to to the best of their abilities and 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 just dominating the other teams that was that was to me that was the highlight it seemed like after every weekend when you guys would return to the office you guys always had a funny story or a little funny side story while covering the games <laughs> so brandon i'm going to turn to you i'm sure that you've got yourself a few funny stories from the summer well, yeah, quite a bit. I'm trying to figure out which ones I can actually share. Uh, <laughs> I think one positive, like a highlight reel story that we can really talk about was when the regional started, we knew that all three teams had a very good chance. I don't know if in our wildest dreams, we'd see all three of them winning championships, but we knew all three teams had a chance. So I had my sponsorship aboard with the U13s. So Brady, Greg, and myself were talking about where are we going to go? Like, 
there's a regional tournament taking place here, there, and there. Our U15s and U18s are forced into the on-island region of the provincial, so they're not going to be playing South Shore. Where are we going to go? And I said, well, I got to stick with the U13s because that's my show. And there was one day when all three teams were playing at the same time, and the three of us are trying to figure out who's going where. I think that in itself right there, you kind of look back at it and you're like, wow, I don't know if we're ever going to have that opportunity again. Like all three teams are playing at the very same time for like prestigious, something prestigious. Even the final day of the regional, regionals, the U15s and U18s were pretty much playing at the same exact time due to the fact that they had that rain out the day before. Yeah. And, and that, it was like, where are we going to go? Yeah, that was that was one of the things, too, was, uh, you know, sitting there and taking the whiteboard and, and putting down the schedules and saying, OK, who's going to cover this and who's going to cover that? And all right, let's let's coordinate with Brandon and see where he's going. Uh, so we can we can at the end of at the end of all this when when the games are done we can make some sense out of it all right so so that was that was part of the uh, you know the challenges of it everything is uh, you know you have three teams in in the playoffs plus you got the uh, the other teams who are who are also doing uh, finishing off the regular season and still you know doing playoffs and everything and 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 trying to be able to cover all of them and you know uh, there there this is the most registrations I think uh, Ganawagi Manor Baseball has ever had. You know, I think there was twelve teams. Yeah, twelve teams and a bunch of girls teams too. Yeah, so it was it was something that was uh, I think uh, you know w- when we first started we didn't realize really how ambitious it was going to be. Yeah, and I, I'm glad you mentioned earlier, Greg, about how how receptive um, the Warhawks organization, the coaches, the volunteers, and the parents were to participating in this documentary and you know doing interviews because. Of course, we were busy setting up all of those interviews uh, throughout the summer and just different things like that. But uh, I mean, you you had an idea from the start that they were going to be excited and involved with this project. Yeah, I, you know, and I think that was that was something that was you know a given. You know, since they they see that we're coming here and they see you know and and they they kind of know who we all are anyway. So, but then to to explain to them that well, don't be shocked if you don't see anything in the paper or anything in on, online and video wise uh, fr- from these games, because this is what we're doing. And, you know, they were like, Oh, that sounds cool. And I think everybody was kind of interested in and intrigued by it, by it, but didn't really know the size of, of, of the, of the project and how it was going to look at the end of the day. Uh, and, and, you know, Brady had, had a real, real vision about what it was going to look like. And, and, you know, he's like, okay, we got to change the settings in our cameras. We got to change how we're doing things. And, you know, this is what we're looking for at, at th- these kinds of shots and, and saying, okay, well, when you get to the field, kind of set up in this, this way. Right. And, and use these settings and, 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 and we'll be able to get captured to look that we're, that, that I'm looking for, you know, when, when all said and done and, and, and the final product was out and it's just, you know, phenomenal. Brady, you have a, an extensive background in video. I was just curious to know if you've ever worked on anything like this before. I mean, I've worked on different large-scale projects, but I don't think I can say I've worked on anything this of this scale pretty much with such a small team. I've worked for different projects doing, oh, you're doing uh, one aspect, one little small part of the project, and then it goes through a, a giant pipeline of people. But never something that was disinvolved by such a small team. And, you know, between me, Greg, and Eve figuring out the schedule at the beginning on our whiteboard, all scribbled on, and then we're scratching stuff off of, nope, wait, this game got rescheduled. Nope, this game, this, this and that, whatever circumstances. And then figuring out, okay, who can make it? Well, I have a birthday party to go to. I can't really miss that. Well, I have to do this. So I have a meeting for this or that. So it was kind of juggling that around between all of us. And then the fact that we made it to just about every single regional game of the U13, 15, and 18s uh, was pretty amazing. And then all the hard work that got put in in the editing process was very, very involved. Eve put in a ton of hours herself. I finished off all the the final cut that you see laid out. And then all of that being said, it wouldn't have tied together without Baby Blue Memories and Brandon having access to his footage, his podcast, stuff like that. So was it really able to flesh everything out? But that being said, on such a small team, we were able to accomplish this there's a reason why 
you see a, a movie and at the end of it, it's five minutes of credits because it's a lot of hard work and there's a lot of people that do step in. But the fact that we pulled this off was, was pretty awesome. Overwhelming at times, but pretty awesome. And Brandon, uh, I was just curious to know, how, how did you feel watching the documentary, the final product and seeing how your, your footage was used? And it's so much of your voice is, is part of that, obviously, because of uh, your voice associated with sports in the community. Well, actually, I was, uh, it was really nice to see, like, to see somebody else sort of use what, what, I was, what I was filming and what we had produced, like, at BBM. Like, it was, it was something that uh, I felt like, okay, you know what, it, maybe it really is making that much of a difference. Like, maybe there are people that are that appreciative of it. So to have that and then to have Brady and Greg ask me, like, uh, what are some of the things that you feel you can we can contribute. Can we use your footage? Uh, is there something else that you want to add to this project? Do you want to give insight? Like having all those questions asked, it felt like, wow, okay, you know what? Maybe, wow, maybe it really is something that's, uh, that's great. You know, I had uh, one comment, uh, somebody who was watching at the screenings that happened on the brewery, not really knowing, uh, your, what your YouTube channel is and, uh, and what your business is and stuff like that. So they were just asking, they're like, is Brandon just standing out in the outfield with a camera screaming his head off the whole time? Yeah. And then me and Greg kind of just turned around like, yeah, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. And, and obviously all the families who are at these games, they all know, they see you there and it's kind of like, hey, I get free commentary while I watch the game. And you, and you heard a lot of interesting comments during the, uh, the showings from community members as well, right, Greg? Yeah. And, 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 and you know, it was, it was something I think that, People, when, when, once they saw it, again, because, you know, they're, what they're used to seeing from us is three to five minute news clips, you know, a little bit of feature stuff, but nothing of, on the scale, right? And, you know, so so seeing it, people are like, wow, you know, this is such a great job. You know, thank you for capturing the memories of this past summer. And, and people can't wait to, to, to see something, uh, to, to get back to baseball, right? And, and it was just, I think, something that people really enjoyed. Yeah, I remember one of the first times that we had the opportunity to watch it here in the office. I think you even said after we watched it, Greg, that you had goosebumps. And I don't think that it's anything more accurate than that. I mean, that's how I feel every time. Uh, no matter how many times I see it, I still get the same emotions watching it. And uh, I always get goosebumps. So how did it feel for you to see that finished product that the team had finally put together? I, I You know, I was I was just amazed and, and and so proud of all the work that was put into it. I knew Brady was driving himself crazy, you know, in the editing process and, uh, you know, we see him sitting in the, in the corner, uh, you know, just, just working on it. And uh, for the last two months or, or more, and then to see it all, all put together. And, you know, uh, after we see the, seen the rough cut of the final edit, and then one, once we had had it with, with all the graphics and the credits and, and everything and, and the color correction, I was just like, wow, we did that. Like we, we, like that was how I felt was like, holy crap. Like, you know, this is, this is something else. And, and, and again, you know, it all, everything starts with an idea, you know, planting the seed. And, and, and that was, you know, that, that conversation that we had at the end of July. And I, I never imagined that it would, it would get to something this like this. Uh, you know, I knew, I knew we, we were going to have something really, really cool on our hands, but everything just kind of, you know, came together and, and having the volunteers and the people involved with the Warhawks so involved with this process and talking to them beforehand of, uh, about it and then talking to them once we did the screenings and, and how how proud they were of, of the work that was done for the for the season. That's, you know, to me, that was just so gratifying. And so, you know, like make, make, made me really happy and, and that we were able to do something like this. And Brady, I know uh, it's, it's clear how much work you put into this project too. So, you know, being able to to watch that alongside other people and, you know, getting their live reactions and things, how did that make you feel? I think when we had the screening at the 207 and we were there with the teams and with the players and with their parents all sitting together and you just see other, the corner of your eye, like somebody's Somebody has a really good play on screen or an interview moment or even just something as simple as they had one clip that ended up in the cut where they get hit by the, the pitcher with the ball, whatever. And, and the dad kind of leans over and <laughs> gives that slap on the back. And that's my boy. <laughs> just seeing all those little moments. And then at the end, Terry came up to say a few words. And basically, he just said, thank you for giving us the chance to relive all those moments again. And that 
basically they'll have this forever. If they want to look back on it today, tomorrow, if they want to look back on it five years from now, they have this little time capsule that they can look back on and, and relive when all those teams won. That's really what this was for. Once we realized what we had, this was, it was for them. It's for all those players, all the parents, all the volunteers, uh, Terry himself, for all them to, to just kind of relive that moment and for everyone else in the community to realize how important these things are, you know, whether it's sports or whether it's, it's, whether it's anything really, all these small little events to capture them and, and have them whenever you want to bring it up is, is, is an awesome thing to have. Yeah. And, and, you know, things like, like, like this and the people behind the scenes that, that make stuff like minor baseball or minor hockey or minor lacrosse happen, you know, it's important work that needs to be recognized and, and showcased and being able to show that from something that, that started out not that long ago with minor baseball in the community again and building to now they're they're dominating and and you know they're being forced to move up uh, because they're doing too well in B and then come back down and then they dominate again and just all that work uh we felt that it was needed to be recognized and, and showcased and 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 put the spotlight on that you know for us to do this it seemed like a natural thing for us to do especially because you know it was one of the only sports happening this past summer you know it, it, it's for a very i think small audience for baseball fans and baseball players in the community but the story behind it and the story of of how things are built and and what's needed to go into it the story behind your was it presents warhawks is one that i think all sports fans will love absolutely and some exciting news is that the entire community has the opportunity to to watch our documentary now greg are you able to tell me a little bit more about that yeah so we had our first private screening for the teams and their families and then after we had three public screenings uh, we said well given the situation in the community regarding the pandemic and public gatherings and and, and things like that we said you know why don't we put it online quicker than we we had planned so so as of monday at 7 p.m it is now available to view at, at, at your leisure on gunawagnews.com, as well as at the USA Facebook page and YouTube page. So it's been a, a really incredible summer and it resulted in a really incredible documentary. So I guess just in closing, guys, was there anything that you might have wanted to add about um, the summer as a whole? I wanted to add the, the, the funny story because at the provincials, uh, there was a team that was coming up after our U13s. There was a team from Ramuski, which they came down like six hours to get to Varen. And in between innings, their manager comes up to me and he's like, are you really online right now? Are you, are you talking to the coach you're going to walk in and telling them where the shift is for Ramuski and where they're going and what ways they tend to go? Like he thought I was an advanced statistician or something along the lines. Like, I'm like, no, 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 I'm just, I'm strictly filming. I'm strictly filming and I'm strictly going to put it up onto YouTube. I think one thing that we can look back on is we'll all re always remember like 18 months into a pandemic, a year and a half, not having a whole lot of ups in our lives during this time. And then we'll remember those 24 hours back in late August of 2021 when three of our teams won championships at the regionals. We'll always remember that. Brady, was there anything that you wanted to uh, share about the summer experience working on this awesome documentary? I'd just like to say I, I hope that people check it out, even if maybe you're not necessarily a huge sports fan. There, it's a great story. You know, we, we found out in the making of it just how long somebody like Terry's been involved. Some of the other coaches who, who went coaching, uh, Luann's been involved in sports for forever, all these different people, just to have that appreciation. Check it out for them. Hear, hear a bit of their story in there too, uh, along with this great baseball playoffs run that we had. And finally, of course, Greg. I just want to thank everybody for indulging us. Thank the organization and the teams and the players and, and being there and, 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 and you know, listening to us, uh, you know, and, and embracing this idea. Uh, I also want to thank Brandon for, uh, you know, to work with Baby Blue Memories and Brady for uh, Cross the River Creative because without, without them, this this never this never gets done yeah, absolutely so greg brady eve brandon congratulations very awesome documentary i can't wait for the rest of the community to see it and thank you for coming in to chat today thanks for listening to your d was a's front page stay up to date with all your d was a podcasts including the lead profiles the cycle and front page by following the your d was a podcast channel on apple spotify and google 
This project has been made possible by the Community Media Strategic Support Fund, which is offered jointly by Official Language Minority Community Media Consortium and the Government of Canada. 